Miss Bennet. I have struggled in vain, but I can bear it no longer. The past months have been a torment. I've come to Roslings with the single object of seeing you. I had to see you. Me. I fought against my better judgment, my family's expectation, the inferiority of your birth, my hand and circumstance. All those things, but I'm willing to put them aside and ask you to end my agony. I don't understand. I love you. Most ardently. Please do me the honour of accepting my hand. Sir, I... I appreciate the struggle you've been through. And I am very sorry to have caused you pain. Believe me, it was unconsciously done. Is this your reply? Yes, sir. Are you laughing at me? No. Are you rejecting me? I'm sure that the feelings which, as you told me, have hindered your regard will help you in overcoming it. Might I ask why, with so little endeavour of civility, am I thus repulsed? I might as well inquire why. With so evident a design of insulting me, you chose to tell me that you liked me against your better judgement. If I was uncivil, that was some excuse. Believe me. But I have other reasons. You know I have. I, I didn't mean. What reasons? Do you think that anything might tempt me to accept the man who has ruined, perhaps forever, the happiness of a most beloved sister? Do you deny it, Mr. Darcy? That you separated a young couple who, who loved each other, exposing your friend to the sense of the world for caprice and my sister to its derision for disappointed hopes, involving them both in misery of the acutest kind. I do not deny it. How could you do it? Because I believe your sister indifferent to him. Indifferent. I watched them most carefully and realised his attachment was much deeper than hers. That's because she's shy. Bingley is too modest and was persuaded that she didn't feel strongly because for him. Because you suggested it. it. I did it for his own good. My sister hardly shows the true feelings to me. I suppose you suspect that his fortune had some bearing on the matter. No, I would not do your sister the dishonour, though it was suggested. What was? It was made perfectly clear that an advantageous marriage... Did my sister give you that impression? No. There was, however, I have to admit, the matter of your family. Our want of connection. Mr Bingley didn't vex himself about that. No, no it, it was more than that. How, sir? Well, it pains me to say this, but it was the lack of propriety shown by your mother, your three younger sisters, and even on occasion... Your father, forgive me. You and your sister, I must exclude from this. What about Mr Wickham? Mr Wickham? What excuse can you give for your behaviour towards him? You take an eager interest in that gentleman's concerns. You told me of his misfortunes. Oh yes, his misfortunes have been very great indeed. You have ruined his chances and yet you treat him with sarcasm. So this is your opinion of me. Thank you for explaining so full. Perhaps these advances might have been overlooked if your pride had not been hurt. My pride? By my honesty in admitting scruples about our relationship. Could you expect me to rejoice in the inferiority of your circumstances? And those are the words of a gentleman. From the first moment I met you, your arrogance and conceit, your selfish disdain for the feelings of others made me realise that you you were the last man in the world I could ever be prevailed upon to marry. Forgive me, madam, for taking so much of your time. 